Welcome back, Math 30-1. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at the trigonomic ratios. So to start off, we're just going to remind us of our sine ratio, cosine ratio, and tangent ratio. So sine is the same as opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the same as adjacent over hypotenuse. And my tangent is the same as opposite over adjacent. So this ends up giving us, if we remember from before, so katoa. Okay, and that's my trigonomic ratios. So now we're going to look at something here a little bit more. We also have something called the reciprocal trigonomic ratios, which is always going to be uh, cosecant is 1 over sine x, secant, also given this symbol, is 1 over cos x, and cotangent is 1 over tan x. So in other words for these, it, they're kind of reversed. So cosecant is the same as we're going to have hypotenuse over opposite. Secant is the same as uh, hypotenuse over adjacent and the uh, cotangent is the same as adjacent over opposite. Okay? Those are just some things to look at for the future. But now we're getting into something different. This one here has in terms of x, y, and r because in this class here we have we're looking at a grid and we have our y is up and down, our x and our resultant or radius. So sine is going to be the same as y over r. Cosine is going to be the same as x over r. And tangent is going to be the same as y over x. Now this part here is what we're going to be using more than Sokotoa. So instead of so katoa, I like to say sir coxer ticks. Kind of spell, so it's sir coxer ticks. Okay, our favorite trig knight is sir coxer ticks. Now, if I want to do the reciprocal functions of those, so the reciprocal trigonomic ratios, that's going to be cosecant is going to be r over y, secant is going to be r over x, and cotangent is going to be, um, sorry, is going to be x over y, okay? So these should be memorized, especially these here. These are the main ones to memorize, and then we just take the reciprocal for their reciprocal function. So just remember this part here, sir, coxer, ticks. So sir, y over r, coxer, x over r, and ticks, y over x. All right, so this next part here, we're just going to skip down to part C. It says, complete the following statements using the information above. So sine ratios are positive in which quadrants? So if I'm looking at sine, sine is referring to my y. R is always going to be positive wherever we are. But now my sine ratio is my y value. My y is only positive in quadrant 2 and quadrant 1. So it's quadrant 1 and 2 is where y is is my y value is positive since sine is referring mostly to y values. Now we look at my cosine ratios they're always going to be positive it's my x values because cosine is coxer so it's x and resultant remember resultant or the radius is pretty much just the radius so it's going to be positive so here my x values are only positive in quadrant 1 and 4 okay so that's quadrant 1 and 4. Now look at my tangent ratios. So where are my tangent ratios positive? Tangent is, um, is my ticks. So that's y and x. So both y and x must be the same sign in order for it to be positive. Well, that's going to be quadrant 1 since they're both positive, and quadrant 3 since they're going to be both negative. Everywhere else, one's positive, one's negative. So that's going to be quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Now where the sine ratios are negative values in the quadrant, so that means where my y values are negative, I take a look at that, that's going to be down here, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4 is where my y values are negative. And then we say where the cosines are negative, so cosine, that's where my x's are negative, so that's going to be here and here, I have negative x's on my grid, so that's going to give me uh, 2 and 3. And then it says where the tangent ratios are negative. So that means we must have different signs. 
So right here I have a positive x, negative y, that gives me a negative tan. And here we have a positive, uh, a, sorry, I have a negative x, positive y, and here I have a positive x, negative y. So this one here is going to be quadrants 2 and 4. And from this we get our famous CAS rule, where we have cosine ratio is positive, uh, all ratios are positive, and sine ratios are positive, and then tangent ratios are positive. So it's C-A-S-T for the cast rule, okay? So example number two wants us to determine, without using a calculator or any type of technology, which ratios are positive and which are negative. So we're going to draw these out. So first we're going to look at sine 280. Well, we have this is 180, this is 270. So sine 280 is going to be in here somewhere. Now. This right here, sine refers to my y, since it's sir coxer ticks, we'll write that down. Sir coxer ticks. Okay, so in this case here, we're going to have, this is going to be a negative. Okay, because my y value down there is negative. Now we're looking at tan 7 pi over 6. So on tan 7 pi over 6, this is going to be pi. Uh, here we have this here, this is going to be... Uh, 0 pi, this is 3 pi over 2, so 7 pi over 6 is going to be somewhere over there. So if I look at this here, both my x and my y, because this is my ticks, both my x and my y are negative. I have a negative and a negative. So this is going to be a positive ratio. Now I'm going to look at cosine, so do a quick cosine, and we have 10 pi over 3. Well, hmm, that's going to be quite a bit here. So 10 pi over 3, so I go once around is 2 pi, then another time around is 3 pi, which is the same as 9 pi over 3, and then a little then 1 third, so I'm right there. So with this part here, this is going to be negative as well. Okay. Now cosecant of negative 225, so I have a negative angle in there, and cosecant is, once again, referring to my sine value. So this is looking at my y. So this one here is actually r over y. So we're referring to y value again. So we have negative 225. So I'm going to look at 225 is going to go from here. And this is 180. This is 270. So it's going to be in this value here. So it's going to be right there, since it's between 180 and negative 270. And that's going to give me a total of, sorry, it's going to be a positive. Another way of doing this is going 360 minus 225, which would give me a total of uh, 135, 135, which we know would be here as well. Okay. Now let's take a look at class example number three. Okay. It says use a calculator to determine to four decimal places the value of each trigonomic ratio. So I'm only going to do a couple of them here. So my first one, we're going to look at sine 280. So I'm first going to put my mode, it's in degree, and I'm just going to go sine 280. Okay? So I end up getting negative 0 0.98. And then we want tan 7 pi over 6. Now I look at this one here. This is in radians because there's a pi there. So I'm going to put that again in here, so except I have to change my mode to radians or convert from my radians to degrees. So I'm going to second quit and I'm going to go tan and we want uh, bracket 7 second pi divided by 6 bracket enter and I get 0.577. Okay, and then I'm going to skip to this sign here. Now the key thing with this is there's no degree sign. Since there is no degree sign, I have to automatically assume that this is in radians. So I'm going to put in, and since my calculator is still in radians, I'm going to go sine 90. And that's going to give me 0.893. Okay? So I look at E here. We have cosecant negative 225. Now this is referring to 1 over sine negative 225. And this is in degrees, right? So now that that's in degrees, I'm going to have to change my calculator, make sure it's in mode degrees, go down, it was in radians, so I go to degrees, and I am going to get out there, and I'm going to go 1 divided by sine 
and we have negative 225, push that in, I get uh, 1.414. So that's all we have to do for these here. Okay, so now let's take a look at class example number four. So in class example number four, it says rewrite the same trigonomic functions as an acute angle. So I have 7 pi over 4. So I'm going to first draw this one here out, somewhat like this. And I have 7 pi over 4. So that's almost, uh, two, it's 1 quarter short of 2 eight. So it's going to be somewhere over there, right? Because this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, pi over 2, and 0, or 2 pi, okay? So we're going to be somewhere over there. Now, I want to know what is this as an acute angle. So I'm going to find this reference angle here. And we're looking at cosine. So in cosine here, we're relating to the x. And my x in there is positive. So I'm just going to go 7 pi over 4 minus 2 pi is going to give me pi over 4. So this is the same as cos pi over 4. Okay? Now here we want cotangent of negative 100. So I look at negative 100, draw this out quickly over here, and we go this way, negative 100, this is 90, so it's right there. We have it right there, and so I want this angle here, and cotangent is going to be my y over x, because remember, sir, cox or ticks, and so in this case, it's cotangent, not tangent, so it's going to be x over y. So in this case, no matter what, they are both going to be negative, so it's going to be positive. So this is going to be cotangent, and it's positive, and we're looking at x and y, they're both negative in there, so it's positive, and 100 is going to be positive, this is going to be 70 degrees, okay? Oh, sorry, 80, because 100 and 80, and then we go right there, so that's going to be 80 from there to there. Sorry, made a little subtraction there. So for C, I want to see how many revolutions I could get out of there. This one's a little bit trickier because it's 11 pi over 2. So if I look at it, I go over once, that's going to be 2 pi, or in this case, because there's 2, it's going to be 4 pi. Then we have another 8 pi, and then, well, then it's another 3, okay? So it's like 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 is going to bring me right there. So that's kind of like saying here we have, it's going to end up right there. So in other words, the saying is how many sets of 2 pi? So that would be 4 pi every time out to make a rotation, right? So that's 2, 4 pi, so that's going to be uh, 2. And we're going to be left with 2, 4 pi's is 8. And 3 over 2 pi's, okay, is what this is equivalent to. So now we have 3 over 2 pi is kind of like our positive angle. Now 3 over 2 pi, if this here is 0 pi, pi over 2, and then this is going to be, uh, sorry, this is going to be 3 pi over 2, that's going to be the same as kind of like 270. And in this case here, my y value, if we look at sir, cox, or ticks, we're looking at my y value because it's sine, it's going to be negative. So that's the same thing as saying negative, sine and 3 pi over 2 as an answer. Okay, So number 5 it says, uh, the point P, negative uh, 15 comma 8, lies on the terminal arm in the rotation of angle theta. So we have this here, we have rotation of angle theta, or however we want to look at it, we can even look at it from here as a reference angle. Okay, So now mark the angle theta on the diagram. So this here is theta, and then calculate the length of OPR. So we want to calculate the length of OP. Okay, so that's going to be my radius. Well, this is the same as C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. In other words here, we have to take in fact our X and, or our Y and our X. So C squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, which is equal to negative 15 squared uh, plus 8 squared, which uh, gives me 225 plus 64, which is the same thing as 289. Then we square root that, which will give me 17. So 17 is my answer there. Now it says use negative 15 
and y from b to determine the exact values of the primary reciprocal tangent ratios for theta. So now we want to find all the tangent ratios here. So if I go sine theta, that's going to be equal to, uh, we remember we use our favorite knights or cocks or ticks. Okay, so sine is going to be y over r. So that's going to be y, which is going to be 8 over 15, or 8 over 17. So this is going to be 8 divided by 17. And cos theta is going to be coxer, is going to be negative 15 all over 17. Okay, and then we're going to look at my ticks, which is tan theta, is going to be y over x, which is 8 over 15. And now we want to use uh, the primary, so now we have to use our cosecant, which is our reverse of our sine, which is going to be 17 over 8. It's the reciprocal. Secant, which is going to be, uh, it's the reverse of our cosine, or the reciprocal of a cosine. And then we're going to have cotangent, which is the reciprocal of our tangent, which is going to be negative 15 over 8. Okay? Alright, so now we're looking at class example number 6. It says cotangent of angle A is equal to root 5 over 2. Okay? And sine A is negative. Complete the following procedure to the exact values. Since the cotangent of the ratio is positive, so that's my x and y must be the same both be either positive or negative, and the sine ratio is negative, uh, then angle A must terminate in which quadrant? So we know they're both negative, so if I look at this, based on the cotangent, or the tangent, if they're both the same, if it's positive, if we look at Cassie, A, S, T, we are either here or here. But now it says my Ten, my a, my uh, y value is negative, so that means I must be in quadrant 3. Okay, so first one says we are in here and here, and then we're looking at my sine is negative, so that means it must be quadrant 3. Now it says since cotangent uh, root 5 over 2 is equal to x over y, we know that the point root 5 comma negative 2 is on the graph, okay, or lies on the turnover arm of the third quadrant. Sketch a diagram and draw the reference angle illustrating the above information. So that one right here, I'm just going to do a quick diagram. We kind of already did that. So I have this, and we're going to have this here and this here. This is going to be negative root 5. This is going to be negative 2, which gives me the point of negative root 5, comma, 2. Negative 2, okay? Now it says use this to determine use our Pythagorean theorem to determine the value of r and hence uh, the exact values of cosecant and secant. So first let's find r. So we know r squared is equal, my radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared which is equal to we have uh, root 5 squared plus 2 squared. If I put these both negatives it's still going to be positive so that gives me 5 plus 4 which is equal to 9, which is equal to 3. So r is equal to 3. Okay, so now we have my radius. And it wanted what is cosecant or and secant. So cosecant is, if you remember, sir coxer ticks. Sine is y over r, sir coxer, and then ticks. So if I look at this, we're just going to put r, so secant, cosecant, sorry is equal to, of A, is equal to R over Y, which is equal to 3 over, my Y value is negative 2, so it's negative 3 over 2. Now I look at my cos or my uh, secant of A, that is the same as, we're looking at coxer, so that's going to be uh, x over r, r over x, which is the same thing as uh, we have 3, negative 3 over root 5. Now, 
We can't have a radical on the bottom, so I have to rationalize this. Root 5, root 5, which gives me negative 3, root 5, all over 3 as my final answer. So we have this one here and that one there.